boleh 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 okay if yes, you can yes. see my screen all right so what you need to do is that you go to week 13 instruction eh uh week 13 mana ni all right week 13 and follow the instruction okay uh take your attendance and then we are going to have the online class and then uh for this uh, for today is that we have a little bit a very uh, simple task based on what i'm going to uh, explain today on the topic so we have a submission so if you have gone through you know that you have uh, the exercise in slide 48 eh? but anyway i'm going to explain first the contents then from there <clears throat> you can actually do the uh, uh, simple exercise very simple so you need to Submit it by 1 p.m. Because it's very simple, then submit it by 1 p.m. A uh, reason why is that you get you need to ha get used to um, submitting tasks immediately. Eh? Because in final exam, you only have three hours. You will open your uh, question, and then directly you need to answer immediately within three hours. So let's just take it as a, a practice, lah, practice, so that you're familiar with the... Uh, short uh, the the very uh, short time okay short period eh so um you have a simple task that need to be submitted which is based on uh, slide 48 okay this one and then uh as usual you need to do the reflection for today okay so <clears throat> okay, everybody in uh, i would assume that today is roughly about one hour eh, because it's a uh, I'm not going to go into much detail on the basic control, okay? Since, uh, okay, if okay, okay um. Okay, everybody in? Okay, there are 30 students. Roughly about 85% in, 85% in. Eh? So we have five more students, but anyway, we will start now. So, uh, Assalamualaikum and very good morning to all. So, for today, this week is that we are going to go to the uh, last chapter. Eh? So, last chapter. So, um, which is on, if you have gone through the 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 notes that I give to you, we are going we are going to learn about chapter uh, chapter chapter eight eh? let's go to see let's look at the teaching plan. Okay, we have the teaching plan. So if you see here in the teaching plan is that actually uh, if you see uh, if you actually go through you have ch chapter 8 9 10 okay, and 11 eh? share your slide oh okay okay great so by you mentioned okay oh god all right so okay in you learn okay just now i was uh showing you in the you learn where you can actually look at the teaching plan okay so um in the teaching plan is that if you see okay can you see now the slide this my screen I think you can see yeah. now eh? all right so if you see here in the screen is that you have the chapter 8 9 10 11 eh? but for today is that um, i'm going to actually combine everything for four main chapters into one chapter a reason why is that um because the other chapter if um, i'm going to talk about system model dynamic response system and uh, will will actually be uh, a lot eh Okay, and if you see for this subject, it's only two credits hour. Eh? So I'm going to combine it and then um, means that to, to actually emphasize on the importance of the subject. So later on, you can actually relate it to other subjects. So if you see uh, in chapter nine is system of modeling. Eh? This uh, later on, you will actually learn this in uh, uh, subject control one. Eh? Control one which is on the system model, mechanical model, electrical model, electromechanical model. So this is where you're going to actually model the system, okay? What you have learned in this uh, subject, then you later you're going to model the mechanical system and so on, okay? So I'm go not going to teach you guys uh, in this chapter because 
you have actually one chapter on system, two chapters on system modeling in basic control one. Okay, and uh, for the dynamic response of system is that you Okay, uh, for the dynamic system, the response of the system model is that um, you're going to learn about the first order and second order. Eh? And then lastly is, so for this, for today is that I'm going to actually explain about chapter 8 and chapter 11, combine it. Eh? So I'm going to explain about the brief description of mechatronic system, which is actually uh, by end of this uh, topic, eh? by end of today, what you will learn is that uh, you will actually uh, relate it to your assignment. Eh? Oh, okay. For this assignment is that you, at least, you need to have a close loop if the assignment requires you to, to have a close loop. Lah, okay. But anyway, uh, you can go to the teaching plan and look at uh, the how, what are the topics covered. Eh? Okay. So, I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Can you see the slide right now? So, we are going to go directly into uh, the slide. Eh? So, slide number eight, which is on the basic control system. Okay. And the learning outcome that will be covered is the LO3 and LO4. So, which is on analyze selection and integration of micro system and also identify and analyze the problem. So, if you see here, uh, uh, LO4 is actually related to assignment. Eh? So, you're going to be a problem in industry or in a setup. Then, what you need to do is that select or identify the uh, suitable sensors or suitable actuator. Eh? So, uh, for today's lecture is that you should be able to explain type of control system. So, what are they? Okay, explain the principle of basic control and application of mechanical control system. Okay. So, um, okay, I'm not going to skip this, but okay, just a brief thing. So, what you have learned uh, up until today is that you have learned about actuation system. Okay. So, actuation system, you have how many types? You have four types. The first one is hydraulic and pneumatic. Hydraulic and pneumatic. The second one is that mechanical, or we call it as mechanism. And the fourth one will be the electrical system. And later on, you will see that in basic in the control one subject, eh, we have the combination of mechanical and electrical system, which is we call as electromechanical system. Okay, so uh, the the actuation system is combination of that. So if you see, example, the power steering, eh, power steering. Right now we have the combination of uh, hydraulic plus electrical motor. Eh? So that is where we call it as electromechanical system. And then uh, in a before actuation system, what you have learned also is on the measurement system. You have learned about the signal conditioning, right? Then you have learned about type of sensors. Then you have learned about data presentation is that how to actually plot the data. You have, you you may want to have a display. What you, you, you want to actually call it data. So you need to have a graph and so on. Okay? And to close up the, the complete mechatric control, uh, system is that you have a closed loop system, okay? a control system. So closed loop system, normally we call it as a control system. So what it means that the loop here from the starting to the ending is going to be connected. Okay. So when you have a connected system, then it will be called a mechatronic control system, which is a closed loop system. So, um, so. The function of uh, the block for the control architecture is that uh, you may want to control some variable to some particular value. For example, you want to control the displacement, the angle, or you want to control the displacement in millimeter or in meter, in micrometer, and then or you want to control the sequence of events. So later on, the sequence of event, where do you actually use this sequence of event? So, um, Normally, you will use this um, using the PLC control, okay? PLC controller. So, PLC controller in, when you are in uh, that year, eh, later on, eh, you have one subject which is on PLC, okay? One, one subject only on PLC 
alone. Eh? So you will learn about how to actually draw the, the flow chart and how to actually convert the flow chart to a sequence event and then how you draw the ladder diagram. So all of these are very useful. Fantasy control is very, um, it's based on logic. Eh? Okay, so um, why do you use this PLC control? Any idea? Student? PLC. You may sometimes hear about the PLC control. Where do you use PLC? Hello? Guys? Dengar tak? Guys? Guys? Dengar, Dr. Dengar. Okay, so dengar. So, I was asking, where do you use the PLC control? Where do you use it? PLC. Any idea? Where do you use it? Where? Where do you use normally? Where do you use it? Any idea? You, you, it's actually used in daily life, eh? Traffic light. Traffic light, correct. Traffic light, eh? So the common one where you see, even, especially in Melaka, eh? Melaka traffic light is actually using PLC, eh? PLC. So you see that uh, you have the, 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 at the traffic light, eh? Right now, uh, at every Melaka junction, eh? The, the, we have the traffic light. You have the countdown, eh? Countdown, which is you have the data presentation. That one is a data presentation because it's going to display the countdown, okay? Um, the Pumadara can actually remove that countdown and then it will also count down but you will know what is the numbering that is going to count down. Okay? So, uh, the traffic light is using PLC and right now, uh, most of the traffic light are actually embedded with sensor. Okay? And you will notice that um, at the traffic light, eh, for example, if you are at the uh, first uh, row, they are at the front, front of the traffic light, eh, waiting for it to go green, you want to notice that if some cars are not actually near to the edge of the traffic light, the, the traffic light won't change to green. Eh? It will stay red. Reason why there's a sensor under the road. Okay, there's a sensor, which is a force sensor, or normally we call it as a load cell. So that load cell is actually um, ditanam lah, okay? being planted underneath the road. So if you see... Uh, some, you, you you try to look at traffic light uh, later on, yeah. Especially in Melaka, like in KL, maybe yes, they are using traffic, uh, the load cell. But you will see that you will know that they are using sensor when uh, on the road there is a square like being cut out, eh? Okay, it's about the tanam bawah tu, and it will have different colors. So um, there's a sensor underneath, eh? Okay, and uh, next is control whether an event occur or not. So uh, event occur not. Also the same thing, PLC, same thing. If there is a car, okay, uh, if it detects a car because you have the sensor, then you will actually, uh, uh, the traffic light will turn green. Okay, so that will if event occur. If there is no car, they will, won't turn green. Okay, so it will stay red. Lah. So control sequence is, uh, for example, the one that I mentioned is that both these can be applied to also PLC. Uh, controller eh? and the sequence uh, example I give another example is washing machine is also using PLC what else vending machine is also using PLC because when you actually press on uh, the button then you will actually uh, get whatever drink that you press on okay so it's based on the sequence or event so event occur means that if, if we press the button then the drink will fall down into the slot eh? Okay, so the element that we were going to see today is that the open loop and closed loop system. Okay, system modeling a little bit on where does the system modeling fit in into the closed loop. Then we have the control unit, for example, either you use micro C or PLC. So micro C is the one that you know you usually hear. Okay, Arduino, Raspberry Pi. That is actually one of the uh, advanced controller. Before this was on micro C. Uh, right now we have the Arduino and Raspberry Pi. So uh, later on, when you are in going to chapter um, third year, eh, uh, you will have subject microcontroller. Okay, microcontroller will cover on this. Eh? Then you will have a project and you will do the um, a simple project. Okay, using uh, Arduino or Raspberry Pi. Okay, and PLC also lah. 
And then you have a control algorithm. For example, on in control one, you will learn about uh, uh, PID controller, like lead controller, and so on. Eh? All right. Uh, so, so what? So what are actually control system? Eh? So there are types of control system here. Yeah, but what is the definition of the general control system? So a control system is an intern connection of components forming a system configuration that will provide a desired system response. So what does this mean by system response? System response is something that what you set in the uh, initial uh, period, uh, initial time. For example, you want to control uh, at home. You, you have the water heater, eh, water heater in your bathroom. Okay, you always you will set the temperature to what degree? For example, when um, if normally water heater thirty five degree, ke, uh, water heater normally I don't have water heater at home. Eh, I old school eh, school uh, shower. Eh. So water heater. Uh, 35 degrees so you actually set the temperature that will be the reference the desired response that you want so uh, once you switch on the water heater it will try to actually heat the, the heating element in the water heater will heat the water inside eh? okay and that therefore you uh, the, the, the the water will actually go up to what you set initially right so um, there are two types of control system. The first one will be open loop system and two the second one is a control loop system so two types eh, of uh system this is not a type of controller no type of controller is different a controller is something that uh, there are so many controller you have the conventional controller like PID. you have the advanced controller like ai artificial intelligence you have a fuzzy logic controller you have neural one. that one is type of controller this one is type of control system Okay, so control system is only two types. Okay, first is open loop, and second one is the closed loop. So for the open loop is that you do not feedback. Okay, uh, later on I will explain what does it mean no feedback. Okay, difficult to control output with accuracy. So it means that if there's no feedback, remember just now I will explain that if you have a close, uh, 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 complete uh, control system, then the end to end will be connected to each other. Okay. If open loop is that means that there is no feedback, the negative feedback underneath, there's no um, connection there. Okay. So meaning that the output of the system will actually ref, um, depending on the input. Okay, the input. What's the input? Okay, input when we talk about a system, normally we will talk about the actuator. Eh? Actuator. So you have the hydraulic, pneumatic. You have the mechanism, which is a combined nose here, and then you have the electrical. So, input. So, the output will only depend on the input to the system. Okay? So, mean that depending on the input current, depending on the voltage current, depending on the uh, pressure, uh, uh, air, uh, pressure, air, pressure uh, liquid, eh? so, it depends on that only. Okay? And you, need, you cannot actually control what are the displacement going to be okay all is up to the input okay so therefore based on this that's why you need a closed loop uh, system eh? so closed loop system must have a feedback okay so if open loop is like this okay the input this output okay so for closed loop system is that okay you have the input you have the output and then remember i said you will have a Feedback plus and minus. Okay, the feedback. So must have a feedback. This is actually the feedback. This is the feedback line. Okay. The second one is that must have a sensor on the output. Okay. So it means that at the output side here, you need have you need to have a sensor. So this is where what you have learned previously. You remember this is a sensor can kind of output. This one is connected to the sensor. So this is where you have the sensor so remember every time if you're doing if you're for example if in your final year project later on you have you need to design a closed loop system then you need to have a sensor okay if you are using dc motor remember dc motor you learned in last week chapter the trickle system there's no sensor or there's no encoder so you need to actually uh, include you buy an encoder to and then connect it to the shaft output shaft of the DC motor. 
Okay. And almost always, you will have a negative feedback. So, negative feedback here. Here, negative feedback. Okay, jarang lah berlaku ada positif. If positif, then it's a feed forward eh. Okay, okay so, um, so uh, more detail on opelopsis control. Oh, siapa yang on uh, mic, offkan mic, I dengar you punya uh, handphone vibrate eh. Okay. Offkan mic, siapa yang on mic tadi? Okay, so an open loop control system utilizes and actuating devices to control the process directly without using feedback. So this is what uh, that I explained in, uh, in the beginning just now. So example is that electric. Ada yang on mic ke? Shafika, Shafika, off can mic play tak? Nuri Shafika. Okay, example is electric toaster in the kitchen. So, you have the system here. Okay. Then, you have input going in and then output here. Okay. So, if you see here that no feedback and difficult to control because electric toaster is depending on uh, just input saja. So, you set the timer, set the sequence. Okay, how many uh, uh, minutes uh, it need to be in the toaster and it will actually pop up. Eh? Okay. So, open loop control system the process or we call it normally here we have the plan plan in plan normally you have a process inside there okay so so input is the stimulus excitation or command applied to a control system so the input is typically the electrical system you have the voltage you have the current you have compressed air compressed uh, liquid eh? okay typically uh is from the external energy sources so that's why sometimes you need need a uh, current amplifier or voltage amplifier um shafika siapa lagi ni yang on crack 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 bunyi dia punya uh, shafika juga i'm not sure uh, you need to go to the apps and find the, the switch to find the button to actually click on unmute. Eh? Okay, output is the one that is going to uh, actual respond obtain from control system. Eh? Okay. So, another example will be speed control of rotating days. Okay. So, if you see here, okay, this shows the um the sketching lah we call it as a sketching of the system eh of a speed control of rotating this okay remember in your assignment assignment uh, i think it was question number four kan four ke three four where you are asked you were asked to actually sketch your um, system kan the overall system where the overall system include need to include your actuator your sensor okay so when in your final exam, remember, do not, you are not allowed to actually copy paste from internet. Eh? Everything needs to be handwritten. Okay, so this is example lah. If you were to sketch it, then sketch it out lah. Okay, so you, you, your, your task or your problem was to control the rotating disk. So you, uh, you will think, oh, okay, what type of actuator need to, uh, that have a rotating motion. So, you will select example for this case is that you want to select a DC motor. Okay. Oh, siapa duduk tepi jalan pula tu? Bunyi motor lalu. <laughs> Ada duduk atas motor ke? Okay, so and this DC motor is connected to a shaft. Okay. And this shaft will actually rotate the rotating disc. Okay. So the one that you are going to control is actually the rotating disc over here. Eh? And for, in order to do that is that, okay, you know that what are the input to a DC motor. So, let's say that um, you have an actuator over here. Okay, if I were to actually uh, redraw this again, I can actually draw it like this. So, this one will be the actuation system. So, in the actuator system, you have the DC motor and you have the process. You can actually draw it something like this, okay. But if you don't draw the process also, it's no problem. You can explain it in the sentences. Eh? So you have the actuator system over here. And you know that for this, you need to have a input okay, for open loop. 
and you need to have an output. So the output that you are going to control is the speed. That's why you have the desired speed, uh, the, sorry, the actual speed over here. So whatever it is rotating, then you have the speed over there, okay? And then you have the input. So what type of input required to actually rotate the disc? So you will have a voltage, okay? So voltage will be the input to the system. So, and you, you see that inside here is that you have an amplifier, meaning that, okay, assuming that uh, you can actually assume that the voltage is too small, then that's why you need an amplifier over here. So, you will have the amplifier. So, meaning that inside here you have the um, uh, signal conditioning, uh, signal conditioning, okay, signal conditioning. So, actually this overall, which is the, uh, the actuation system, uh, Basically, okay, if you see uh, in the previous original one, you have actuation system, okay, where you have the actuator and you have the signal conditioning, where one of the signal conditioning is the amplifier. Okay, okay so that one is the, uh, the, the explanation on the open loop. And so let's look at the closed loop. So closed loop system uses as measurement of the output and feedback out the signal to compare it with the desired output. So it means that you have a plant over here, plant or actuator, okay? Same thing, eh? okay? Assuming uh, actuator is actually a plant. A plant is more, uh, it's a bigger scale where you have actuator over there, you have mechanism and so on, okay? And uh, of the actuator will be the actual output that you're going to see or you, you want to collect the data, eh? Okay, so this output is going to be compared with the desired input or normally in control, we call it as the reference set point. Okay, so you have the reference set point. So should be, for example, you want to set the, uh, the rotation at 90 degree. Okay, 90 degree. Okay, so maybe the actual output is 85 degree. So it means that when you compare this output with this uh, desired, uh, the, with the reference, means that there's error 5 degree, right? Therefore, this controller will work to actually compensate for error and try to reduce the error so that from it will actually become from 85 degree to 90 degree, okay? So, Okay, this one uh, shows the ideal closed loop plot diagram lah, uh, normally, eh? but um, in general, but sometimes in textbook, eh? textbook example, uh, control book, nice, okay, control book, and other books, they do not actually draw the block diagram like this, okay? How they draw it is that, okay, so the ideal closed loop plot diagram is drawn, okay, I to go okay. It's drawn like this, eh? So you have a uh, and a plan, okay. And then you have the output. You have a controller over here. You have the reference. And then you have the feedback, okay? So the output is over here. So you may ask, where did the sensor go just now? So the sensor normally will be attached to the actuator, kan? So actually, your sensor is over here, plan plus sensor. Okay, it's the same thing, okay? you If you draw it like this, underneath it's still okay. And if you draw it like this, plan, we will assume that your sensor is inside the plan. But for the sake of this subject, introduction to mechatronics, please draw like this. Okay? The first one, eh? Okay, but ideally, in textbook, you will see that it's always being drawn like the diagram below, eh? Okay, and, I did, uh, and always you need to draw the feedback, have a sensor inside here, and also always negative feedback. So negative feedback, yeah? So definition on control is that the word control is usually taken to mean which what, okay? It's to regulate, instead to regulate the, the, the output, 
to direct okay or to command okay so because everything is to force the system to follow whatever reference that you need okay so uh, a control system is an arrangement of physical component connected or related in such a manner as to command to direct or regulate itself or another system okay? so let's look at uh, this example an elevator elevator okay, okay? so um, then you can read this okay this one shows the elevator back in uh, the, the, the 90s eh? 90s eh? 80s uh, so you have a simple uh, elevator and you see that there is a lot of mechanism involved eh? involved so you have the guiding guiding uh, rail what else you actually this one is connected to pulley right a pulley so you have a pulley which is pulley if you remember you have a belt uh, uh, you have a, a groove there to make sure that it's actually going to rotate according to the uh, groove okay? so let's look at example of this elevator Okay, boleh dengar tak? Can you hear the sound? Boleh eh? Good day, uh, sound tak dengar. Huh? Dengar? Tak dengar. Tak dengar. Good day, sound tak dengar. Tak dengar. Sebab saya makan ni sekejap. Okay, sekarang dengar tak? Sekarang dengar? Dengar, dengar. Dengar, ah, okay. Okay, okay. Among the safest ways to travel, less than one chance in 12 million that you will go wrong with the elevator you're riding in. Let's see how they work. The most popular elevator... Okay, um, during this uh, viewing of the video, eh, make sure that you identify what type of mechanism they are using what type of actuator they are using and what type of sensor they are using eh? okay so list it out eh? okay so because later on i'm going to ask a question eh? their design is the roped elevator where a car is raised and lowered by steel cables the machine's muscle lives up here at the top of the elevator shaft its ropes around a shiv a pulley with grooves to grip the ropes that's connected to an electric motor Turn the motor one way, the elevator car goes up. When the motor turns the other way, it goes down. A counterweight lives on the other end of the ropes to offset the weight of the car. It's usually about half the weight of a fully loaded passenger elevator. So on an average ride, the two are perfectly balanced. All the motor needs to do to move the car is provide a nudge to tip the balance one way or the other. This system saves energy as well as wear and tear on moving parts. Once the car is moving, the motor's only job is to control one of the two falling objects. Both the car and counterweight are attached to guide rails inside the shaft. They keep everything from swaying back and forth and also give a backup set of brakes something to grab onto. If anything goes wrong with the motor, 
hydraulic fluid is cut off, and that automatically releases this brake that seizes the ropes for a quick stop. Technically, one of these steel ropes is enough to hold up both the car and the counterweight. The rest are there for backup, in case one snaps. But what if the whole set is cut? Don't worry, it still won't plummet. This machine has a built-in failsafe. There's a governor located beside the motor, with its own pulley and separate cable attached to the car. There are two spring-loaded metal hooks called flyweights inside the governor. If a car free falls and the governor spins too fast, centrifugal force pushes the hooks out. They seize ratchets on the fixed inner rim and stop the pulling. The governor's rope jerks on an arm on top of the car, and this locks the brakes. The idea of the rope elevator is simple enough. One side goes up, the other goes down. It just took a couple of thousand years to figure out how to stop. It's easy enough to drive, but without brakes, we'd rather walk. Okay. Right, um, so you have seen the video. So what type of mechanism uh, inside? Mechanism. You go to the first one, mechanism. Anyone? Since that door wrong, like, like that what kind? Okay, my di my dear, huh? what type of mechanism that you see in the video? Um, ah, uh, only one. Pun dah cukup. Uh, pulley? Pulley, okay. So the pulley is actually connected to what eh? Pulley is connected to what? What is the at the bottom and what is the top point? Anyone can help Madiha? Uh, sorry that, that I don't know. I know. Okay, tak apa. Don't know, uh, tak apa. Tapi dah boleh, boleh jawab lah. Puli satu, ada banyak lagi mekanism dalam dia. So, let's see. Okay, Kairul. Kairul Fahmi. Kairo Fahmi? Uh, electric motor itu? Mechanism. Itu actuator. Itu electric actuator. Uh, mechanism eh? Mechanical actuator. Puli tadi, okay, jawab soalan ni kepada Madiha tadi kan. So, puli is connected to what? What is the part is connecting? Okay, puli is something that is going to pull something kan? Going to attach to something else. So, uh, what is the end? One end of the puli and one end of the another puli. Hairul? Uh, uh, satu end dia connect ke... Elevator tu satu lagi, dia connect kat beban. Beban, 
Okay lah, boleh. Alright. Um, satu orang lagi lah. Thank you. Wong Wong Wai Jin. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning. Okay, so um, my question is, what are other type of mechanism inside the in, inside the uh, the elevator system just now? Uh, I don't know what the name is. But, uh, I I saw it, uh, something like a, a stopper at the. Mm -hmm. Connection with the pulley, uh, and the, the rack stop, lock, uh, right? Lock, rack, and rack, the rack. elevator okay. is stopped. Okay, okay, all right. Lah. Hampir, hampir lah. Okay, that one is actually a check, eh? the ratchet mechanism. Remember okay. that uh, ratchet mechanism in the one that I showed to you if you want to cut the piping, and eh? so the system is similar, just that uh, that one is one is actually uh, rotate very fast. The ratchet mechanism because it's have spring loaded, eh? So when it actually very fast, then the spring will open that it will lock the mechanism. So it's similar concept like the ratchet uh, mechanism that I explained in chapter, I think in the mechanical actuator lah. So, okay, ratchet. Right, good. So, um, okay, uh, one more question lah. Okay, what type of, uh, okay, another student eh, thank you. Mohamad Syamil. Mohamad Syamil? Ada tak? Ada. Nur Najah? Okay, the, the question is, um, what type of actuator other than the mechanism used inside the elevator? Uh, hydraulic. Hydraulic, okay. Lagi? Lagi. Ada tak tadi? Uh, ada lagi tak? Uh, di motor, motor. Motor eh, alright. Thank you. Okay, correct eh. So, in elevator, they use two types of uh, uh, actuator, eh? hydraulic and motor. So, anyway, if you want to, because the video was very fast, eh? maybe some student cannot catch uh, the, the, the information. Okay, so make sure that you go, you can actually look at other video related to elevator. Eh? Okay, so what I want to explain just now. Okay, thank you, um, uh, Naja. Eh? Right. Um, Let's go to the slide just now. Okay. And okay, there is a, another example uh, actually in the escalator. Okay. Uh, this one is also quite interesting because in escalator, you have so many mechanisms. Okay. Uh, this one, uh, please just go to my slide and then click on the link that I gave to you. Okay. Okay, so in this one is that how does escalator work? Eh? So just look at uh, the, 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 the video. It's interesting because I, I, I would really um, prefer, okay, I would not prefer, lah. You, as an engineering, engineering student, you should know the mechanism that is uh, around you. Eh? So you have you are on you are riding elevator you're riding on the escalator so do you actually think about the name do you think that there is so many accidents when using the uh, escalator so what happened so go through the video and if find find the what are the type of actuator being used for the escalator and what type of mechanism because escalator has a lot of mechanism inside eh? Okay, so if, if one of the mechanism fail, that's why uh, you will see that sometimes the escalator will actually swallow up human eh? uh, because it's open. Okay, so that means that there is a, 
a faulty design inside or because of wear and tear. Okay, wear and tear. Wear and tear ni maksudnya, after a while, if there is no maintenance, after for example, five years ke two years, uh, escalator ni dia, uh, they will have a uh, maintenance. May, maybe weekly maintenance or monthly maintenance. Okay, it it not be done by a technician. Okay, so uh, what happens is that when lots of escalator fail, Okay, when when people uh, was riding the escalator at the shopping complex, meaning that the the shopping mall uh, didn't actually the shopping mall the head of the shopping mall eh, or the manager didn't actually have a routine maintenance on the escalator, so it never been checked. So therefore, when there is overload on the load on top of the escalator, then that will have uh, actually um, the, the the escalator will actually fail eh, at that time. Okay, so go to this video and look at it. So what I'm I'm trying to actually really is the elevator ele uh, the elevator motion, which is actually a closed loop control system. So let's look at this one. Okay, the first one is that you see that this is elevator in, uh, input and output. The okay, input is this one. Okay, for example, you are going to the fourth floor. Eh? Fourth floor means that the input uh, for x axis is the time value, and the output will be the floor what floor that you are going to go, which is what floor for this case. So the input reference that you set, okay, this one is right. If I were to draw it out like this, it's going to be a rectangular input. Prime cosor. Okay, you have a rectangular input. Okay, so this is level four. Okay, and this one will be the input command. This is the reference that you want. Okay, people press on the button for then your the elevator, elevator will actually go up. So, what you see here, okay, uh, okay, what you see, the blue line over here, the blue line, okay, it start from the zero also, okay, what happens is that it's going to very slowly move up and steady state at the fourth. Okay, the reference number four. For this case is that you see that it's going to go up and steady state. So you have um, this one, we call it as the dynamic response. Eh? You have the transient response. Transient response means that the output of the system is actually movement from zero to the reference. So you have this one is called the transient response. Okay, and the steady state response is something is that when the output does not have any if uh, any oscillation value anymore. So it's going to stay it state and have a same value up until the end of the uh, time here. For example, if you press 4, it's within, for example, 20, uh, 10 seconds, it will reach the steady state error. So steady state error is the difference between the reference to the steady state response just now. Okay, so for this case is that, you will see that the error is actually a bit high. Eh? Means that there is error in between the floor, floor. Okay. So what you want for in the elevator is that do you uh, see that most of the elevator when it stop, you you see that it's maybe a bit uh, below the floor that uh, you are in. Eh? So that's where you have the. It doesn't actually reach up to the fourth level, or it doesn't go up more than that. So, uh, it is one example. And if you see the second response over here in this graph is that the response of position control showing, showing effect of high and low gain value on the output response. So, if we have the same elevator just now, number four, eh, of, so you have the output reference four. And then you see that you have two response. One is when you have out very high output gain and second one is output, uh, low output gain. So low output gain is the one that you want to achieve for an elevator. Eh? Okay, you don't want any oscillation. This is what we call as oscillation. Okay, oscillation until it's reached steady state. Okay, okay, for elevator, do you want an oscillation when you write an ele elevator? Guys, do you want any oscillation? Of course, no, right? It's like uh, no. riding. It's like you are in a funny uh, earthquake, you pluck to do 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 can. No, it will be very scary for the for the for those uh, for the rider on the elevator. So you want it to go up steady rate 
very slow, not very fast. Uh, slowly until it reach the rest, uh, the the reference of the floor, then it stop. You don't want it to go broke and then stop. Okay, so this one is where you want to have a very low gain, so that it's not going to go very fast to the reference, but it's going to be a uh, it's like a roller coaster. Okay, okay. So effect of having a uh, different input uh, gain or output gain. Eh? Okay. And this one, uh, one of the criteria, I think this criteria I explained already in chapter one before, but I'm going to go through very fast. Controller is required to process the error signal to specify the certain criteria. So you have the steady state error just now. For example, maintain speed for if we take a cruise control in car. So you want to control, uh, maintain the speed at 120 km per hour. You want to control how fast the car reach 120 km per hour, for example. In this case, not just now, okay. Do you want to control the transfer response to, to very fast reach the reference, but with very high overshoot, or you want to reach to the, uh, the, the, the reference over here, but with low overshoot for the, it depends on application. So for elevator, you do not want it to be very fast, but high overshoot. You want to be to, to actually make it reach to the reference slowly and steadily, yeah. Okay. And disturbance rejection, how good is a car to compensate changes of road surface? So this is where, uh, example, in cars nowadays, uh, you have the disturbance rejection. means that if there is a pothole, so you want the car do not have actually a bumpy ride in. Okay. And sensitive to changes, robustness, can it cope with additional load while maintaining 120 kb per hour example? So if you see here, I, I will just show you a simple now what we have uh the the Malaysian mid car eh, proton at 70 eh, and we have right now x50 so uh you can go to this two video i'm going to show you one video only on the blind spot information system uh bliss and lean departure warning lbw okay so we have these two um system inside the car of course there are other system that they have in the proton x70 but i'm going to show you only uh one First, I think some of you guys already uh, uh, maybe have seen the video, but I'm going to play it again. Sorry, okay. Uh, another one, one, one more video is actually very interesting. Uh, let's see if we can just play it. Uh, how many minutes? Eh? Two minutes. Eh? I think I believe play. Eh? Look at what type of system. Uh, that they have inside the activity. Eh? Other than the this other things like
on that video, okay, you see there's a lot of uh, control system inside. Actually, in the SAPT, they have several control system. Okay, the one that I, uh, okay, for example, you have the uh, forward collision warning, eh? Okay, and of, of course, uh, forward collision warning is actually really, uh, linked to your the braking system, eh? Because when it detects obstacle inside, it will can actually automatically brake for the driver, eh? And you also have the TPS, okay, tire pressure system, eh? So to detect um, the, the pressure or the system, but the one that uh, is actually um, add on to the S seventy compared to other types of uh, uh, the, the, the car manufacturer, yeah? for example, like other cars, uh, imported cars like, like Honda and Toyota, is that you have the uh, ADAS, okay? ADAS is actually the ad, uh, advanced driver assist system. Yeah? So under that ADAS, you have you can see that there's a lot of sensor inside included. Yeah? And then you have the lane of departure warning just now, and then you have the blind spot information, and you have the ACC additive cruise control. Okay, normally in cars you have the cruise control CC, cruise control. So it means that when you set a reference limit, when you when you are driving your car, so you have reached one hundred twenty km per hour. Let's say that you don't want okay, you want to maintain that one hundred twenty km per hour. Eh? Okay, my car uh, in Spira, okay, they have the, uh, the the CC cruise control. Eh? And so when you reach that 120, you just press a button, then it will maintain 120 km per hour. Uh, just that um, when you uh, when you reach, uh, when there is a car in front of you very slow, okay, you cannot, uh, the car cannot actually brake on its own. You are, the, as a driver, you need to brake. Okay, so it means that there's no adaptive uh, control over there. But compared to the X70, eh, you have the ACC, adaptive cruise control. Means that it's similar like what uh, you can set in the Espira. Eh? So when you you do drive, okay, when it detects obstacle in, uh, in front, means that the car in front of you is very slow, the car will automatically reduce the speed and maintain a distance in front. Okay. So when the car goes out of the view, then it will start to accelerate and reach the uh, reference that you set originally. Okay, so that is what we call as the uh, added cruise control. It adapt to the environment. Okay, so that is one of the thing that uh, uh, the advantage of the activity right now. That, that's why you see lots of activity on the road. Yeah? Okay, because it's one thing is in terms of the price is cheap. And if you compare to other manufacturer SBT with all the advanced technology inside, then it's uh, com it's considered cheaper and it's actually uh, comparable to continental car. Eh? So just uh, you can go see any video related to S70 and get the idea what type of actuator or system that they have eh, inside. Okay, uh, and this one, uh, I actually bought my students uh, last, I think last two years. Eh? This one is uh, 4th of April 2019. Okay, I bought my students to the Proton COE Center of Excellence in Shah Alam. Eh? So, so I'm here. Eh? This is me. Okay, and these are the students. They are 4 year student. That time I was teaching at manufacturing system. Okay, it's an elective subject. But, um, um, I was, I actually bought all of the fourth year students. So roughly about 90 students, two buses. Eh? We went to Proton COE Shah Alam by two buses. And then um, uh, we actually went to the factory, multi-vehicle factory. Um, okay, this one is the engineer. Okay, this engineer is actually my friend. Uh, my friend from MRSM, eh? uh, he's working as an engineer. Uh, the, the, I think the manager, eh? manager over there for the factory. So um, he bought us uh, along the production line. Uh, this um, is uh, basically on the assembly part. Eh? So all of the uh, all of the parts is they get it from the uh, from Pera, I think Pera, Proton, eh, over there. And then the assembly is over here at the uh, some parts are some cars, eh, not all um, are assembled at the Shah Alam uh, factory. Because some parts are actually assembled at the pair over there. Okay, so 
Mm, uh, this one is one of the engineer. Actually, this is my brother. Eh? My big brother. Um, so I have uh, I have one brother, uh, my older brother. Mm, uh, he is an engineer. He is the what is so is a manager. Eh? Manager. One of the manager at the uh, he's under the R and D department uh, for engine. Okay, he's making engine. So this is where he explaining about the engine of. Uh, the, the, but being like me, uh, mechanical student, eh, uh, when my brother explained about it, they are all like, oh, what is this and so on. Okay, so hopefully if you guys, if I have the time or I have, uh, if I were to actually teach you later on in any other subjects, uh, I maybe plan to bring you to some of the, for industrial visit, uh, the one that I normally bring student is uh, Proton. Uh, and also semiconductor processes. Eh? Uh, example last time was at the uh, SD Micro Electronics more. Eh? So uh, let's see how this COVID goes. Eh? Okay. So again, okay. Uh, recap: We have two types of controller. So we have a pulley system where you have the actuation system of here, or we call it as the plant. Okay. And then you have the input signal, the voltage, current pressure, output. Okay. Let's say that. You want to actually convert the open loop to a closed loop, okay? So remember that you have a need to have a, okay? You must have a sensor, and always, almost always the feedback is negative. So ref example of reference that you set in the beginning of uh, this point, okay, is maybe speed control. You want to control speed control an angular controller, a motor rotation of motor, or you want to control a displacement in a linear displacement, okay? So must have a big bag so make sure you draw out the feedback with the measurement system inside here and make sure that you put it negative over here okay negative make sure and then you have a controller here then you have the reference desired output over here so this is where the, the simple block diagram of a control system how actually you convert from open loop just now to closed loop and remember if when I actually add the controller here and you have the reference here, reference value, okay, the, uh, the unit of the reference is the same with the unit of the output. So meaning that if you were to set the reference in uh, kilometer per hour, means that the output also need to be kilometer per hour. Okay, and when you have a controller inside here, the output of the control block here, okay, it's called a control signal, okay? And this control signal will actually control, give, it will be the input to the actuator system, okay? And control signal will be similar like what you have learned in open loop just now. Control signal can be in voltage, current, or pressure. So control signal can be in current, voltage, or pressure, okay? So... Don't get confused here. Eh? So what is the input to the actual system is a control system for a closed loop. Okay. And for the controller is here is like I said just now, you may have a PID. You may have a PLC. You may have uh, something like a fuzzy logic controller. Okay. Okay. This, let's go to example of a closed loop system. So we have a control system of rotating this. Just now I explained the output. So if you were to to look at this diagram okay this diagram actually shows a quote open loop controller why because if you see here the dc motor is actually connected to the rotary disc but can you actually measure the output okay you can see with your eyes that it's going to rotate but you cannot actually capture the output okay the output the rotation of the dc motor so how to make it into a closed loop is that, remember, must have a feedback. So, from this diagram, you're going to actually improvise, add on a little bit. What you need to add is that you need to have a feedback, feedback, okay, compare with the reference. Must have a sensor because the DC motor do not have a sensor, then you add a tachometer. Tachometer is actually like an encoder. Okay, tachometer. You can actually Google that. What is tachometer? But you have learned this in the uh, sensor topic. Eh? Okay, this is an encoder. So it's going to read the uh, rotation. Okay, eh? so this rotation then is going to compare it. Then that's why you need to have a negative feedback because you need to compare it with the reference that you set initially here. 
Okay, why you have the uh, potentiometer over here? Because when you set a reference, you can actually change it with different degree, kan? So this is the the the, the analog setting lah, using potentiometer saja. Okay, okay. So from this one, okay. So how do you actually draw out the block diagram? So this is what you did in your assignment, eh, kan? So you draw out the block diagram based on this drawing just now. So you draw the block diagram. Okay, and label the mechatronic subsystem. So you have a rotor, okay, which is connected to actual system. Okay, so this one, remember everything will be the actuation system. Okay, so this one will actually uh, represent your open. Okay, size here is based on the schematic diagram previously. Draw the block controller for rotating. So uh, I think you can draw. Loop. So how do you make into closed loop? Take this one. Remember, first one is what? Must have a feedback. Draw it. Must have a feedback. Okay. And it always must have a negative feedback. Negative. So make sure you put it negative over here. Okay. And then what else? Uh, must have a sensor. So the yeah, sensor block here. Sensor. Okay. This. That's all. That's how you draw a closed loop control. Okay. So sensor over here because it's using tachometer. So write out tachometer lah. Right. So this is the arrow. Sorry. Oh, bukan yang ni. Bukan ni. Sorry, yang ni eh. Tachometer. Ni arrow out. Right. Um, and another example is that die bond process eh. So wafer fabrication flow. Well, remember that in chapter one, I asked you to, to view a video and on semiconductor processes. So let's just do a recap. Semiconductor processes, we have two types, which is front end and back end. Okay. In the front end is that you're going to produce the wafer. Okay. Wafer. Wafer fabrication. So wafer fabrication will be the front end process. Back end is that from the wafer here, you're going to actually assemble it and test it and then ship it out to the customer. So this is will be back end. So example in Infineon, we have the back end over there here in Malacca. We have the back end. So it means that they get the wafer from the inside and then, sorry, from cool inside and then they are going to actually assemble it in Malacca. Okay. So um, just go through what is the wafer fabrication process. This is for the front end. Eh? front end process so from incoming wafer and so on and then testing you come up with the wafer so this wafer is going to be sent to the back end if you're gonna remember what i wow well, you you don't understand what i explained so just a recap go again to my chapter one topic in you learn and look at the video eh? and in back end is that you have these processes and backend is a lot of processes actually. You have the pre-assembly, you have the assembly front of line, or we call it as in Infineon, we call it as front of line. And then in third one, in 17, eh, one year, I was at the Infineon uh, doing attachment for the wire bond process over here, eh, wire bond process. So for the pre-assembly is that you get the die bank, okay, from the uh, front of front end uh, here, okay. Die bank here, and then you're going to saw it. And front of line SMD will start with the die bond process. Die bond process, pure wire bond and QC gate testing. Next is going to go to the end of line process molding, post molding, DDM and DJM marking means that laser marking, X ray, eh? okay, trim and form. So I think you have look at the video. Eh? So what I'm going to explain is on die bond process. So die bond process is something that you have when you have a wafer over here. Okay, what you need to do in the uh what no, not you uh, if you are working in infinite then yes in die bond process is that in the uh, front of line sorry front of line okay the starting process that you will get a wafer. This wafer is that you are going to go do the back grinding. Meaning back grinding is that the bottom part here will be grinded to a very small thickness. Okay. Then after that, you're going to be do the dicing, okay, elimination and dicing. So briefly sawing, cut out all the, the 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 chip on top of the wafer, cut it out, okay. 
and then um, an actuator will actually pick, okay, die pick uh, the, the the die from the wafer just now, and then will bond to the okay, so die bond process. So this is a sample of die bond process. Okay, uh, I think I don't have do I have time to play the video? Okay, I just play one video so that you will understand more. Okay, correct video. Eh? Okay, if you see here, this is by bond process. You see this one is the frame that is moving from here moving big big big. Okay. You see the robotic arm here is going to actually picking up the dye from the wafer. Okay, after the wafer sawing, after you cut the wafer, okay, then it's going to actually pick up the dye and then put it on the frame. So this is what we call as the dye bond process. Okay. okay so you can look at that video later. Okay. So for this case is that uh, this is example of how the setting is. Okay, the setting. So we have the motor axis over here. It's going to pick uh, the die from the wafer and then going to be, uh, put it on top of the frame just now. So it's either going to move and if you see here, okay, this wafer is actually on top of a uh, axis motor. Okay, and then underneath here you have the ball screw mechanism. So what it does is that most of the time this this motor is static and here the one that is moving is the wafer is either moving left and right or moving like this okay it's going to move x and y axis so it's going to move and the uh, the, the picker will actually stay at the position right so uh, this one is an example of the driver process where you use a closed loop eh? okay so um, you have the ball screw so on and then you are going to connect the ball screw here to a motor. Okay, remember last time the ball screw, how does it work? And then uh, so from there is that you're going to do a close open loop control. So let's say that it's a very simple uh, open loop control. So you have the wafer on top of here. So it's going to move left and right. We are taking only one axis only. For example, this one is X axis. Okay, connected to a stepping uh, stepper motor over here. Okay, so it's going to move accordingly so you can actually move it accordingly by using the stepper motor so so the motor is accurate, accurate eh? so therefore this is really uh, actually uh, an advantage uh, if you use this so how do you actually uh, convert from open loop to closed loop so from open loop to closed loop is that you have the same setting over here you have the setting stepper motor and the ball screw so how you connect is that you connect the servo motor connection because you're going to give the input signal so you will have something like a comparator over here will be the uh this this one uh, okay this one will be the comparator eh? the error the error which is the input will be the reference over here output from this uh, stepper motor because they don't have stepper motor for this case that do, they don't have the encoder it's going to rotate according to the input but if you want to have a precise motion then you need to add an encoder at the end of this shaft so that is going to read the rotation okay so this encoder will be the sensor is going to give a feedback okay negative feedback uh, means that they're going to give a data and compare it to the reference so based on that you can actually control the displacement okay? and another one is that you can see this one is direction of travel so you can see that in the s video just now is on the uh, lane departure eh? lane departure warning okay lane departure warning is using the same concept so where for the case of s is using the vision a camera to actually detect that is going out of the lane over here but a very simple 
prefer to design your own, you can actually use an IR sensor to detect the line. Means that you have a line tape on the floor. Okay, using white line and the iron sensor can actually use to because iron sensor is based on reflection eh? so it's good you are going to actually for example this is the lane so iron sensor when it detect the lane it will actually give a signal so because of the sensor is going to reflect the light back again to the receiver of the iron sensor so if it's in the black lane means that it it actually um it does not detect lah right because it's not going to reflect anything so this is a very simple way on how to use a sensor for lane departure but of course for the s70 they are more advanced they are using the vision camera for it okay? and for the closed loop okay this one is very simple okay based on based on the lane departure what happened is that okay if we talk about a closed loop for a lane departure eh? so you have a car car over here Let's say I'm going to uh, take example of Tesla. Eh? Okay, Tesla because Tesla is fully automated electric car, electric vehicle. So if it's going to go out of the lane, what happens that it's going to give an output that is going to out of the, the uh, lane, then this sensor normally it's using um, camera. It's going to give a feedback that it has an error. Okay, and for the driver, if a driver is actually controlling, then you are going to the one who are actually going to adjust the steering wheel. But for the Tesla case, is that you don't have the driver, you have the controller over here. So a controller will adjust the steering mechanism. And remember, in steering mechanism, the power steering mechanism, you can you actually connected the hydraulic to electric motor. So that's why that electric motor can be controlled using a controller. Okay, I'm going to show you the last video. Okay, this one, this video needs to be shown so that you get uh, an idea. Uh, what is it? Okay, this lah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Can you see this was in is inside Tesla? Eh? Okay, you see that the driver is not actually holding any uh, the steering. But what happens that this one is the view inside and this one is the view of the camera. Okay, left rear camera mid, uh, the, and the uh, video range camera. I think this is the front camera. Eh? Okay, you see that in each of the uh, view here, the video, the camera, it actually detect obstacle. Eh? Okay, means that for the camera, you can actually do a coding and detect, okay, this is human, this is tree, this is obstacle, this is car. So if you see here that it is detecting uh, green, and blue eh? okay and the red line here the line is setting as a red line means that it needs to make sure that it's actually following inside the lane so this is how tesla work but they are using the vision camera okay so um this more advanced lah but we do not say that even though it's uh, fully automated it's uh, actually safe eh? because uh, cases where this um, there's an accident using tesla because of the maybe a uh, sudden movement of a human cycling and then suddenly the tesla does not react very fast it does not detect that movement so therefore it cannot stop in time eh? so sometimes um fully automated is something that you uh, it's uh, is not safe lah if it involves safety eh? yeah okay this one okay you can go through and look at it how does it work you have so many camera in tesla so you can just go through there and then this one is example of fluid tank okay so fluid tank this is example of uh, manual control open loop lah here the goal is to regulate the level of fluid by adjusting the valve so just go through very simple so from here open loop you're going to actually control it and make it into a closed loop very fast and sometimes you can actually control a multi-variable control system this is example of tesla just now tesla the very the advanced one or x70 lah not so much as a fully automated it's semi-automated eh okay tesla is fully automated x70 is uh, semi-automated okay so you have so much process in the x70 over here okay processes like the lane departure okay the acc the uh, the adaptive cruise control and so on so so many uh variable inside one car or one plan eh? and this one is another a, a real example of power generation using boiler so example of um 
few multivariable you have you want to control speed you want to control the pressure you want to read the temperature measurement okay you want to control also the actual uh, oxygen measurement and the input to the system is a uh, few inputs you have a uh, water fuel and air so this one we will example of multivariable okay control uh, the condition then this one I give to you so that uh, it's easy to understand what is automation, closed loop, design, feedback, multivariable. Okay. And okay, I'm going to finish this. So how do you actually design a process? Okay, control process. So how to design the control feedback? So step one is identified. So what you have actually did in your assignment is analyze the property. into closed loops. So, multiple description of the system. So like I say, this will be covered in this pattern, but it's going to cover in control subject, control one, eh? okay? But at least you will understand more on what is the process to actually help the control system, okay? How to design it later on. And last is to design it, give a plan design controller. So this one also you are going to learn in control two. So you are the dual control subject, control one and two. Eh? So what is important is that to identify and for you guys to actually come up with the plot diagram. Okay, so this shows the three steps through the flow, flow diagram over here, flow chart, eh? very simple. So you have the first one, identify, modeling and design. So you need to do is that identify and design design is much more on the block diagram only yeah okay so example is that system what you need to do for the modeling is that model the method and to do that you only need to identify so for the open loop try to actually come up with a system you have so many subsystems so how does it go look okay and then um so you can go through what is modeling Is that when you have an equation, you don't need to have do the the, the experimental uh, at the hardware. You can use the method modeling to actually run the experiment. Okay, so example lah. Okay, I give one example rotating this. So identify is that control goal. So design a system that will help uh, uh, rotating this at a constant speed. Ensure that the actual speed percentage of desired speed. Okay, so means that identify first what is the control good. A second one is that identify the variable to control. So variable to be control for this for the for the example is that the speed need to be controlled. Okay, so other than that, you also need to identify what is the input. Huh? Input that control the motor. Okay. Step two will be the modeling. So modeling this one is. Uh, uh, want to model the DC motor one 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 thing. The next one is that this mass is that because of this, this mass is called as okay? so modeling that. So example of what you learn later on in control one is that you are going to do the free body uh, diagram modeling. And this is how you actually do the modeling later on in control one. Okay. And from this uh, mod free body diagram, you're going to come up with the equation representing this uh, diagram or system. Eh? So based on this, you can do the simulation work no need to do the experimental work okay and lastly is that you want to control uh, design the controller specification what sensor to use for the feedback so like i said add the tachometer draw the feedback loop and then you want to draw the block diagram from this open loop draw out the closed loop okay so that will be uh, the complete step okay and um, okay three step so based on that step what you need to do for the task that you need to submit in uh, by 1 p.m. Very simple, okay? The disk drive read, read system will help the position reader hit to read the data stored on the track on the disk. So this one is going to read, move, okay? So design system that will show that the head files above the disk at distance of less than 100 meter, nanometer. So it means that uh, the head, okay, if you look at this side view, eh? So you have the disc over here, then you have the arm here. So the arm is over here. So make sure it means that you need to actually maintain the distance here is 100 
nanometer. Okay, ni arm. Okay. And then the accuracy is about 1 micrometer. So 1 nanometer. Okay. Position accuracy will be 1 micrometer and the speed from the track is 50 millimeter, millisecond. So you want to control the distance. You want to, want to control the accuracy and then you want to control the track. Okay. So accuracy is accuracy of this one. Lah. Means that Distance is the, the, the reference that you want. Accuracy can go up to 1 micrometer and the track of the speed is 50 milliseconds. So, ada berapa tu? Uh, what, one, what type of uh, output that you want to control? Eh? So, step one is that what is the goal of the system and variable to be controlled? So, identify it. I think it, it, it should be two types of goal that you want to control. Eh? Step two is modeling which is you are going to skip. And step three is draw the closed loop control board diagram. So based on step one, just directly draw the closed loop. So there will be a very simple exercise, okay? So that you will understand uh, what you learned today. So that will be all. So make sure that, okay, go to you learn. Okay, do you learn? Sorry, eh, uh, ada extensive sikit dua minit. But go to you learn, okay? And you know you learn is that I... Uh, already mentioned, okay, I submit exercise, it's slide 48 before 1 p.m. today, eh? okay, and one more thing is that, okay, um, next week on Wednesday, okay, you will have an industrial seminar, look at the, you learn, you have an industrial seminar on Wednesday, 20 January, 2.30 p.m., this is compulsory, actually for your subject, we, we have uh, industrial visits, sepatutnya. but because of the COVID, then there's no visit, so, we are going to change it to industrial online talk. Okay, so make sure that you uh, the link to join the Webex will be informed later. Okay, please just make sure that Wednesday 2:30 p.m. is until 4:30. Yeah, so make sure that you are online. Yeah, attendance will be compulsory and will be taken. Right. So any question? Any question, guys? Tada. Okay, if no question, question, oh, thank you very much. So, see you. that exercise and that's next Wednesday, 2 30. Eh? All right, so this will be the end of the chapter, the, the topic for this subject. So next week, uh, Wednesday is the talk and on Thursday is that I'm going to um, recap or do uh, some revision and make sure that uh, the assignment last date is to submit is tomorrow. Alright, uh, thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bye. Thank you, Doctor. Alright, thank you.